Hi, my name is Sander van Vught. I'm a Red Hat instructor and I'm the author of two video courses that help you preparing for the Red Hat RHCSA and RHCE uh, exams. You can find a link on this slide that gives you more information about my video courses and my upcoming book as well. Apart from that, I like providing good information for free. And that is why I'm making this video, which is about understanding SE Linux. So let's have a look at the agenda. So in this video, I want to provide a solid explanation of SL Linux for people that are new to SL Linux. So we go through a short ag agenda. First, we have a look at what SL Linux is and how it works. The second part, we consider important task number one, which is working with labels. SL Linux is all about labels. So once you understand how labels work on SL Linux, you're good. Uh, then we will be talking about understanding Booleans. Booleans are so very important for working with SL Linux because they provide the easiest way to change policy. Next, I will teach you how to analyze SL Linux behavior. We will have a look at some common SL Linux problems and how to fix them. And we will finish by doing a case study about SL Linux. So let's have a look at the what and how first. So we are going to talk about SL Linux mode, about policy, and about labels. Hang on while I'm switching to my demonstration. So this is a rather default installation of CentOS 7. CentOS 7, as you know, is equivalent to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. So let's have a, look, have a look how it works. To do that, I need to become a root. So I'm a root, and that's good. So to work with SL Linux, the first thing that you need to understand is the NX, SL Linux modes. To, sh uh, to show the current mode, we have get enforce. Get enforce is giving me enforcing. Enforcing is the basic SL Linux mode, which means that it is operational and it is protecting your machine. And I hope that after watching this video, your systems will be in enforcing mode at all times. But there are different modes as well. One interface to set them and to see which modes are available is through etc sysconfig se linux. You can see the three different modes listed here. We have enforcing, we have permissive and we have disabled. In fact, you can say that there is disabled mode and there is enabled mode. In enabled mode, uh, you can choose between enforcing and permissive, but enabled mode means that SL Linux is loaded in the kernel. So the kernel is uh, considering SL Linux functionality for all of its applications. Now, the difference between enforcing and permissive is that in enforcing mode, Services really are blocked if something illegal is happening. And in permissive mode, uh, the system is only logging messages to the SL Linux log file, which is var log audit audit.log. So this is enabled mode. In disabled mode, uh, no SL Linux policy is loaded and functionality at the kernel level has been disabled. So you have nothing at all and your intruders can do whatever they like to do on your server. So disabled is not good. But uh, on some situations, some people uh, say that, hey, my application requires me to run in disabled mode. I don't like statements like that because when people say that their application requires them to run in disabled mode, often it just means that the application vendor doesn't understand SE Linux and is too lazy uh, to make his application SE Linux compatible. What I like doing is making applications Linux compatible. And then we go to the vendor and have them certify it. That often works. So in my opinion, there is no reason uh, to ever switch your system to disabled mode. So let's do between enforcing and permissive. Permissive is cool uh, to do troubleshooting of SL Linux. And enforcing is cool if you want a fully protected system. Now let's get back to the command line where we have seen the get enforce command. The get enforce command is allowing you to check. Uh, the get enforce command is allowing you to see which mode you are in. Uh, 
If you want to set the mode, you will use set and force. You can see that set and force allows you to switch between enforcing and permissive. Uh, you cannot switch to disabled mode using set and force because that requires changes in the kernel and that requires a restart. So you cannot, you just cannot do it. If you want to switch to permissive mode, however, that is easy. Set and force permissive or set and force uh, zero will do the same thing. And we do get and force. And we can see that we are now in permissive mode. And let's go to set and force enforcing uh, to get back to permiss to enforcing mode. Now, the next thing that plays a role in SL Linux is policy. Now, policy is also defined in the etc sysconfig SL Linux file. There are three different policies available. There is a targeted policy. The targeted policy is the best policy that you can use. It, when using it, all your processes are protected. There is the minimum policy. The minimum policy is really what can be used by distributions that are still developing on their SE Linux stack. And in the minimum policy, uh, only selected processes uh, are protected. Not everything. So minimum is not good. And there is MLS. ML is, S is like the holy grail of SE Linux. It is multi-level security protection. It is rather advanced. And if you are preparing for an exam like uh, RHCSA or RHCE, you don't want to know about it. Also, for good basic protection of your systems, you don't need uh, MLS security. So by default, we have the targeted policy that is operational. Now, to understand the policy, there are labels, and these labels are set in the context. On an SL Linux system, everything has context, and to display context, you use dash uppercase Z. So, ls dash Z shows me directories on this system, and on the directory, we can see context. Context consists of three different parts. The first part is the user, the second part is the role, and the third part is the type. For managing SE Linux, you basically just want to work with context type. Users and roles are cool as well, but only for advanced users. So in these videos, I'm not going to talk about users and roles. I might be doing that later. Uh, context types are very important. As you can see, Every directory has a specific context type. Now, the interesting thing is that every process also has a specific context type. We can see many processes that were started by a user that are running as unconfined type, which means that SL Linux doesn't really care about them. But we can also see, see that there is some uh, system processes. Uh, like in here, we have a process that is running uh, a KSM Tune D uh, type. So many processes, especially the processes uh, that are providing services on your server, have a specific type. Look at the SSH process, for example. You can see that SSH has SSHD underscore T. Now these processes, they have a type and we call that the source type. And you probably guess what we call the type that is set on files or directories on network ports. That is the target type. Now, the purpose of the SL Linux policy is to define which source types have access to which target types. And if you set your label correctly, SL Linux policy will just allow you uh, to run a service that wants to access a specific target file or network port. But, and this is why SL Linux is annoying for so many administrators, if you want to do something different, you need to change uh, the context type on your target. And that is something that I'm going to cover in the next part of this presentation.